morning, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to Trendside Church Online. We are so glad that you've chosen to join us today from wherever you are. It is so important that we praise our great Lord and Savior. In John chapter 16, verse 33, God says, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That's an empowering thing to remember, that no matter what happens in this world, no matter how crazy or scary it gets, we serve a God who has already overcome it for us. Now, before we jump into a time of singing this morning, I just want to let you know about a few opportunities. First, our weekly Zoom prayer times, they are changing just a little bit as we launch into the month of June. There is a Tuesday morning prayer time at 10 a.m. for any ladies that would like to join in. This is a call-in prayer meeting that you can join just by using your phone. The phone number to call is in this week's Trendside Connect email. The next prayer time, which everyone is welcome to join, will be Thursdays at 11 a.m. And again, the link for this is in this week's Trendside Connect email. The next thing to let you know about this morning is for our young adults. There is a young adults apologetics group beginning this coming Thursday, June the 4th at 7.30 p.m. And you will find the link for this also in, you guessed it, this week's Trendside Connect email. Now just a reminder, if you would like prayer during the service or have questions, please feel free to click on the live prayer button during the service and one of us pastors would be happy to connect with you. We pastors stay on after the service for a few minutes as well. If you would like to talk following the service or would like prayer, just click on that button and we would be happy to connect with you. Well, that is it from me for this week. Psalm 9 says this, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Would you join in singing as Don Van Haltren leads us this morning? Good morning, Trendside. It's, uh, it's good to be leading you in worship this morning. Um, it's a little strange doing it this way, but it's, it's what we got and it's what we're going to work with. And we know that God can use it. So um, normally right now I'd be telling you to stand up and give someone a hug or a high five or a handshake. But... We can't do that so but it's gonna happen again so that's cool so before we start let's um, let's just bow our heads and let's pray father we thank you for this morning God we thank you for the opportunity to worship you Lord and we just invite you Holy Spirit to meet us in our homes wherever we are right now God um, that you will just speak to us that you will use your pastors as they bring your word this morning to God please bless them in Jesus name amen um, I'd like to read Psalm 146 this morning. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirits depart, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Let's sing together, um, right where you are, whether you're sitting on your couch or wherever you are, just uh, let's just give this to God this morning. Thank you. 
Father, we thank you this morning that we can come and sing praises to you. We have so much to praise you for. As the psalmist said, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And that's what we have been doing here this morning. We just want to thank you for the love that you have for us. A love that would take you to the cross to die for our sins so that we could live with you forever. We just thank you so much for the blessings and for the love that you have for your creation and for, for us. We think this morning of people who maybe do not feel like praising you, who have lost loved ones during this pandemic. And we just ask for your um, protection for them, for peace for them as they um, seek to um, 
look to you for guidance and direction in this difficult time for them. And we think of those who are either sick with the pandemic or have other ailments, and we just ask for your healing for them as they get through this. And may they know that you are in control and that uh, they can trust in you and that you would heal them. We want to think of this morning of those who are serving us in the healthcare industry and also in um, the essential service area, people who are working to serve us and help us through these difficult situations. And we know that there are some from our own Trendsite congregation who are also um, serving you in this way. And we thank you so much for their commitment to do this. And we just pray that you would protect them from the pandemic and, and help them and guide them as they seek to help those that they are working with. And we ask that you would just continue to protect them and keep them safe. We want to thank you for our own Trendside staff here at this church as they seek to um, bring services together each week in this new format that you we thank you for their uh, commitment and to you and to this work that they're doing and we just pray that you would bless them for what they are doing we pray for pastor jeff this morning as he brings the message to us that you would give him the words to say words that we would be listening for so that um, we can hear what you want us to hear and to help us draw us closer to you we thank you for the being able to trust, being able to study your word, and we just pray that you would watch over us as we do it and draw us closer to you. We pray in thy name. Amen. Hello, Trent Side Bob Cajun. My name is Bonnie Tokar, and I am an active leader on Wednesday evenings for the Blast Club at the Bob Cajun site. And for those of you that are there that attend the club, I surely missed our last few weeks, and I cannot wait to go back in, in September. So I hope to see you there as well. Our reading this morning is taken from 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 to 27. Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they really did not belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar? It is the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a man is the Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. See that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he promised us even eternal life. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just, at, just as it has taught you, remain in him. Our second passage is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 to 10. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. 
The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin, because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning, because he has been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. Thanks be to the word of God. Good morning, Trentside. So glad to be sharing with you once again and to be sharing from this incredible letter of 1 John. One of the overarching themes of John's letter is the contrast between darkness and light. And today I am speaking on one of the darker themes found in the book. But to help with that, I thought I would record this message outside in the beautiful light of God's creation. One of the things that happens with Christians, especially when the world is dealing with pretty major global events, and I would argue a global pandemic would meet that qualification, is we often turn to the prophetic and apocalyptic portions of the Bible and see if what we are experiencing may have been predicted earlier by the biblical writers. Sometimes we even try to guess not just if certain events were predicted, but if certain peoples were even being described. And this morning I have the daunting challenge of tackling a passage which speaks about one of the most mysterious and dark figures mentioned in all of Scripture. The figure I am referring to and who John names in this letter is none other than the Antichrist. I am sure by just saying that title, many of you listening may be imagining some frightening apocalyptic figure. When I started ministry back in the late 90s as a youth pastor, one of the most popular book series at the time was Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins' Left Behind series. I'm sure some of you remember that series. A series that sought to fictionalize end time events based on the Bible. Many in the youth group read those books and hounded me to teach on Revelation. And a number of them would often ask me who I thought the Antichrist was. Sadly, I generally disappointed them for not definitively telling them that it was President Bill Clinton or possibly the Backstreet Boys. After all, it was the 90s. Today, we are picking up that conversation and I will seek to answer who or what is the Antichrist. And more importantly, how can we identify him and his schemes? Now, back when the youth asked my opinion, they were disappointed that I never gave a definitive answer. But today, I, wanted, I do want to give the definitive answer. I have figured it out who and what the Antichrist is. Hopefully, I have your attention a little bit. Now, let's look closely at our text and see if we can answer the question. Who is the Antichrist? Number one, the text tells us the Antichrist is someone who is real and who is coming. Look at the first part of John 2, verse 18. Dear children... This is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. John assumes that after the ascension of Jesus, we are in the last days. In other words, we are waiting Christ's return, and therefore also waiting for all the predictions Jesus said would precede his return. One of the predictions prominent in the early church was the, eventually, the eventual coming of this Antichrist figure. Remember, even Jesus said there will be many false prophets who will come. But John doesn't just leave it there. There is more he warns us. Not only is the Antichrist real, but, listen to this, number two, there is actually more than one Antichrist. Listen to what John says. Even now, many Antichrists have come. Yikes! More than one? Not one, but many? Well, hate to say it even gets worse. Did you notice what else that verse said? Number three, these antichrists are already here. Again, listen, even now, many antichrists have come. The antichrist is not just one, but many. The antichrist is not just coming, but already here. I hate to say this, 
but it gets even scarier still. Number four, it says this, there are actual antichrists among us. Listen to what verse 18 says. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. Did you get that? The antichrists are among us, among the people we know and the people we love. Now that is truly a fight, frightening thought, but before I freak you out anymore, please, I don't want you to start looking at your neighbors and co-workers and family members suspiciously. And please do not call them the Antichrist. I'm sure that will not go over very well. Remember, we are always called to love, respect, and honor everyone we possibly can. In just a moment, I'm going to give some input on how to discern Antichrist among us. But before I do that, let me give you two quick things of how we should think about and understand this figure or idea of the Antichrist. First, we need to know it is only John who uses the term Antichrist. And he only uses it in this letter and in 2 John. And you need to also consider how John communicates as a whole. As you read through this letter, you will notice John likes to speak in absolute categories of black and white, good versus evil, darkness versus light, loving versus hating, living in sin versus living in righteousness. John communicates with an urgency, wanting us to think in these either or categories. He does this because he wants to protect us. John has seen how so many people he's loved have, been, have strayed and have been hurt. So here he is saying there is not just light and darkness, good and evil, but there is Christ and there is that which is antichrist or against Christ. We're either drawn to Jesus or we're drawn away from Jesus. We will either acknowledge Jesus or we will disavow Jesus. John wants to get rid of this fuzzy kind of middle ground. Second, consider how else John describes the Antichrist later on in this letter. In chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, he writes, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit does, does, that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. Did you notice what John says here? The Antichrist is not so much a person, but a spirit. Now this is tough to grasp, but the term spirit is one of the most nebulous, difficult words to interpret in the Bible. The word is pneuma. It literally means wind or breath. It can refer to a spiritual being similar to when we speak of the Holy Spirit. However, it often, most often refers to that, the inner motivations and inner nature of a person. Think of how we talk about a person's spirit. Possibly a better way of understanding this is to think of it as every breath or utterance we make and each idea we hold will either in some way acknowledge Jesus as God's chosen Messiah or it will reject Jesus. Therefore, we are to beware of any spirit or any person or any ideology that dismisses Jesus as Lord. And as there were deceivers in John's day, so there are still deceivers in our day. Now let's change direction and consider what are the signs that help us recognize the spirit of the Antichrist at work around us. First, the Antichrist is someone who denies Jesus as Lord. The first sign to look out for is someone who rejects the claims of Jesus. This is extremely clear. Look at verses 22 and 23. Who is the liar? It is the man who denies that Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the Christ. Such a man is the Antichrist. 
He denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the, the Son has the Father also. John also mentions the Antichrist in his letter of 2 John. Listen to first seven of that book, of that letter. Many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the Antichrist. Now you might be thinking, this sounds like anyone who does not acknowledge Jesus as Lord in, in some way is the Antichrist. Obviously, atheists, agnostics, Muslims, Hindus, etc. all reject Jesus as Lord. So does that make them all Antichrists? Well, maybe in a very broad sense. But this is not what John is really concerned about. He is specifically concerned with those who are already part of the church, or at least have come out of the church. Again, listen to verse 19. They went out from us, but they didn't, did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. Again, this also comes across in John's second letter. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teachings of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. John is specifically referring to false teachers within the church, with those who will influence, influence primarily from within, not so much from without. I cannot stress this enough. This is why it is so important that everything that we pastors sh share, make sure you test it with Scripture. There are a lot of people who sound Christian, sound biblical, but lead people astray. There are many who will say Jesus was a great man, a great prophet, a great example, a great moral teacher. But unless they claim Jesus as Lord as the way, the truth, and the life, beware. The Antichrist is one who calls us to reject Jesus as the Messiah. And secondly, the Antichrist is someone who leads us into sin. Jump down to verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 7. It says, Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. There is often a lot of emphasis on what is more important in the church, right doctrine, believing the right things, or right living, doing the right things. Here is the thing. These are not mutually exclusive. The reality is, if we do not think the right things about who Jesus is, then we will begin discounting the way he has called us to live. Over the years, I have spoken with several people who grew up in the church. And over and over again, I have heard different ones tell me something to the effect, I just don't think I believe anymore. And usually I ask, well, tell me why? And they will often give me the same sorts of reasons. Well, science and Christians are hypocrites. I've had bad church experiences and many, many more examples. However, in just about every case, these same people were also choosing to make sinful lifestyle choices. Lifestyle choices that are clearly against God's word. Now, do you think this is just a coincidence? Once we reject Jesus as Lord, we end up making ourselves Lord. If Jesus is not our Messiah, then we are choosing the anti-Messiah, the Antichrist. So, Pastor Jeff, who is the Antichrist? First, anyone who claims to be a Christian but leads others to reject Jesus as Lord as the way, the truth, and the life. Who is the Antichrist? Second, anyone who leads God's children down the pathway of sin. 
I need to clarify one more thing before I close. There may be some here today who are a little confused. You may have been taught the Antichrist was a singular and sinister figure who is going to show up in the end times and lead the world astray. Well, today I have read every single passage in the entire Bible that uses the title Antichrist. So where does the idea come from of this end of days figure? That idea comes from other places. In Daniel 7, Daniel 7 has a vision of four beasts, and there is a final beast greater than the other who sets up his rule before he is eventually overthrown by the Ancient of Days. John in Revelation also speaks of two beasts, and specifically the second beast who we read about in Revelation 13, who will perform great signs and deceive the world. This is also where we read about the infamous mark of the beast. Third, Paul in 2 Thessalonians speaks of the man of lawlessness who will be revealed in 2 verse 3. And finally, I already mentioned earlier what Jesus says about false Christs and prophets. Often, all these passages and figures get mixed together with John's Antichrist. All these passages and figures need to be seriously considered. But here is what I think is absolutely most important. There is often an obsession with this end of days antichrist figure in Christian circles. And it sounds like it was the same in John's day. Again, John says, dear children, this is the last hour and you have heard that the antichrist is coming. But what did John do? Instead of having the church fix their attention on this mysterious coming figure who is going to lead the church astray at some uncertain point in the future, John shifts their attention and tells them, you need to be far more concerned with the one who can lead you astray today. Dear friends, there is a threat out there that is far more dangerous than COVID-19. It is the virus of the Antichrist, the spirit that draws us away from the hope, the love, and light of the world, Jesus Christ. But remember this, if we have received him, we already have the vaccine to overcome the virus of sin, the virus of doubt, and the virus of the Antichrist. As Jesus, as John reminds us in his, in his letter, Every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. Verse 4, but you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them. Why does he say this? He says it because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Amen. And God.
Thanks, Pastor Jeff, for sharing God's word with us this morning. As we go through this week, may you keep your focus on Jesus. May you keep your faith strong in him who saves us. May you keep from the temptations that come your way and choose to be obedient to Christ. Let me leave you with these words from Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. See you next time.